<laughs> Welcome back to High Tech Farmer. It feels good today. I'm finally back in the saddle of a tractor. Gonna move some stuff around today. Got a load of seed coming here after lunch and hopefully move a bunch of beans from our bean shed over to our shop so we can start warming them up. First thing we got to do, I had our 8R in the shop for a week, making some updates inside the cab and on the globe. So now to make room in the shop, I'm going to bring the 8R back into our big machine shed. The 8R is parked back in our big machine shed. It won't be long before we have to get the planter out, hook back up, run through some things on here because we're not farther than two months away from potentially putting some seed in the ground. We don't have any big things on the planter that we're adding, just some annual maintenance of things we need to check over before the planter is ready to go. Although we are adding some smart firmers, so basically a sensor that follows into the trench of where the seeds place, that'll give us a temperature, moisture rating for some of the rows that we put that on. So when we do get the planter out, we gotta make sure we get all that stuff hooked up and running. And now I came into the shop and since we're gonna start moving beans from our bean shed over into the shop, I need to make a little bit of room. So I'm gonna pull the 6150 out and everybody's favorite tractor, the 560. I actually have it in gear right now and I'm not able to push it. I don't know, something must be jammed on the inside because all the oil ran out. So I'm just gonna leave that. We'll just whip the forklift around that every load that we bring in of beans. That way we can start warming the beans up in here so we can start treating it another month. I was moving the tractor, I think I figured out a way to get this 560 out of the way for one final time. And there we go, we'll just sell it. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I just put that sign on there since that tractor hasn't moved from that spot in the shop for three weeks. Now I'm bringing the forklift over and we're gonna start hauling some beans. This is where I wish I could just snap my fingers and all the beans from this shed will jump over to the shop that way we want to have to manually drive with the forklift all the way around the large machine shed and bring them into the shop. But I am fortunate, as you can tell, there is very minimal to almost no snow in our yard right now. Although we need the precipitation, it's nice when you're doing this job, they don't have to bundle up very much. But there's snow on the way tonight, so no more chit chat, let's start hauling. I'm going to start by hauling the beans inside these large seed boxes because the beans in here take a lot longer to warm up to our 50 to 55 degree temperature that we're looking for compared to the ones in these sacks. So we'll start with carrying these two loads over. seed move that I want to get moved. Ideally I could have got these rows a little bit more full out to the front of the shop but unfortunately the 560 is still sitting there. But the seed truck just pulled in so I'm gonna unload him. We got that one bag all floated down there in the shop. Now the driver's whipping around up here to the corn shed. We'll get those four pallets of corn offloaded inside of here. the seed we're getting in for today so I'm shutting up the doors here in this shed and then we'll go back to moving some beans. I finished hauling all the beans into the shop today that I have room for. Reason we bring these beans into the shop at least a week before we start treating them is that way they can warm up. It sounds weird but these beans when they come in here are right around 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 
and by bringing them in the heated shop where we crank up the heat to about 65 in here, we can get these little beans inside these seed containers right around 55 degrees and that just helps a ton when we run all the treatment that goes on to this little seed and fill onto the seed coat. It helps the treatment in terms of coverage and it helps the treatment stay on the soybean seed itself. So I'll crank the temperature up here in the shop and before somebody asks down below in the comments, why do we not just bring the soybeans in off the semi trucks into the heated shop? Well, it's because we often receive soybean seeds in the middle of harvest or at the end of harvest when we still have our combine in our shop and we don't have room for all the seed. So we have to bring them into a different shed and then eventually transfer them over once we get all of our winter shop projects done, kind of like we did today. Ideally, it would have been nice if our shop was connected to our soybean shed. That way we could have just had an overhead door in between the two and we could just move the soybeans inside a controlled environment from the cold storage into the shop. But that's not the way things are set up currently at the yard. So as you saw today, we just have to keep working with what we got by driving the beans from over there, over here. And in the shop now, I realized I probably could have got one more roll of soybeans here between the truck and this row. I got the lawnmower tucked back here and I kind of wanted to get it out to change the oil filter, drop the oil, grease everything, sharpen the knives on the deck. That way this thing's ready to go come next spring. So we'll get this thing ready and service to go. And if it doesn't snow tonight, maybe we'll move some more beans in the morning. See if I can get him started. Sat here for about a month. Come on, come on. Ah, oh, come on. motor for about 10 minutes oils warmed up that way it'll come out of the motor a little bit easier and I also this time put cardboard down on the floor although I don't anticipate more oil than this drain pan I think this only holds like three quarts that should all fit in here I put down a little bit of cardboard that way I don't make another big oil splotch all over the concrete there we go there you can see the little bit of oils running out it wasn't that dirty of oil we only put on 40 hours on this more last year, but it's just good practice to change oil and filter in this stuff at least once a year. Now I just gotta spin off the old filter, put the new one on. I gotta say, this is probably my least favorite tractor. I don't know, do you guys consider a lawnmower like this a tractor? Is this a tractor? Is it not? Let me know not that down below in the comments actually. Is a lawnmower a tractor? But this is not my most favorite tractor or piece of equipment to run, but it's definitely my easiest and the one I like the most to change oil because you don't have to take any shields off. They got a nice drain hose for the oil. It's really easy to do. Less than 20 minutes, you can have everything done. Now we should just have to pour our two quarts of oil in here. Put the dipstick back in. Double check that the oil level is good. The oil's changed. And we'll start working on the blades. And I should grab a funnel. Stick the dipstick in there, tighten them in, and now we'll check it to make sure our oil level. Yep, we got our three dots covered, so we're good on the oil. Now I'm wanting to get underneath the lawnmower, that way I can sharpen the blades that are underneath there. And normally, we put a big strap around these front two arms and raise it up with the loader. But since we still got the snow pusher on and the loader's in the other shed, I'm going to see if I can just use the forklift to raise that up. Well, that actually worked better than I thought. Might have scratched just a little bit of the paint on the mower, but 
Those things run into trees and branches all the time, so a little bit of paint scratch underneath, no big deal to me. What size is it? A, first guess. Here's the three blades I just took off the mower. As you can tell, they're super dull. Not even sharp to the finger at all. I grabbed some safety goggles. We'll bring these three blades over to our grinder, see if we can sharpen them up. I got both ends of the blade razor sharp. Sharpened up there with the grinder. Now we'll shimmy back underneath the mower, put them back on. To just be able to zip this up. There we go. The lawnmower is now ready to go for this spring, whether we have an early spring and don't get any more snow the rest of the way, or we catch this six inch storm that's coming through tonight. We're ready to go. But that's gonna be it for today's video. Thanks so much everybody for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.